Hello everyone, myself Shweta Shah and I am your instructor for the subject microprocessor and microcontroller. In this subject, we are going to start with unit 1 that is introduction to microprocessor 8085. In this uh, session, we are going to see today the topic that is what is microprocessor. So let me see what are the outlines for the session. These are like, first of all, we will see the basic of computer system, then we will see the introduction to microprocessor and then we will see how the microprocessor works. Okay. So let me first start with the basics of the computer system. So a computer is a programmable machine that receives input, stores and manipulates the data or information and provides the output in useful format. Basic computer system is consisting of a CPU, memory and the I/O unit. This is the block diagram for the uh, basic computer system. This consists in of CPU, memory that is ROM and RAM and some I.O. devices. These I.O. devices are connected by using some I.O. interfaces. Okay. This all connections are done by via using some buses like address bus, control bus and data bus. Here your address bus uh, contains the address of the location that can be of memory or that can be of some I.O. device and uh, that is provided by the CPU that you can see that is unidirectional your address buses are of unidirectional then second thing you have data bus to transmit the data that can be transmitted from cpu to io or memory device or that can be transferred from memory to the cpu or io to the cpu so this is basically a bidirectional data bus and uh, another bus is for providing the control signal and that is your control bus Okay, so this is the basic block diagram where your central processing unit or CPU unit is connected with some memory units like RAM and ROM, some I.O. devices by using I.O. interface. Okay, here uh, this RAM uh, means your random access memory and ROM means read only memory where you can only read the data in ROM and uh, where in RAM you can read as well as write the data. Okay, so this is the basic block diagram how your computer system works. Okay, uh, next let me see. This is the uh, diagram for the microcomputer. Okay, so we can define microcomputer as a, it is the micro it is the programmable machine that has two principal characteristics. Uh, that is, first one is the respond to the specific set of the instruction in well-defined manner and second thing, it can execute a pre-recorded list of the instruction. Okay, first thing, it uh, has a specific instruction set. Okay, and second thing, it can execute a pre-recorded instructions in a given manner or you can say in a specific sequence. Okay, and uh, as we have seen in last diagram that it is containing mainly three blocks like CPU, input output device and memory device. You can also uh, refer like this, denotes the bus and by using this bus you have connected microprocessor or you can consider it as a central processing unit with memory, input output devices and so. Okay, so this is the basic microcomputer system, how you can represent it. If we consider the microprocessor, then uh, the microprocessor is the programmable VLSI chip, which includes ALU, resistor circuit and the control circuit. Here ALU stands for arithmetic and logical unit. Uh, so this basic three units are there, like ALU unit, resistor unit and control unit. In this ALU unit, all of your arithmetic and logical tasks will be performed and result of that task are going to be stored inside this resistor or you can also say that that ALU performs some task on the content that you have stored inside this resistor. Okay, so this is the first thing where you can store your data that is your resistor where you can perform some operation that is your ALU and for performing this operation and storing that result or providing that data you will require some control and that control is provided by this control unit. Okay, so this is the basic block diagram of any microprocessor that it contains majorly three things that is ALU for arithmetic and logical operation, resistor for storing the data and control unit for providing the control signals for all other tasks. 
Okay, so this is the basic block diagram for the microprocessor. In, uh, if we consider the microcontroller, then the microcontroller is the silicon chip which includes the microprocessor as well as memory and the I/O on the single package. Okay, that is containing MPU plus the memory, I/O, and other peripheral devices on the single chip. While in microprocessor, we are only having the processing unit. Okay, but in a microcontroller, we are having processing unit as well as the memory, as well as the I/O and other peripheral devices inbuilt on a single chip. Okay, if you remember that previous diagram, then in previous diagram, we have connected memory and the I/O devices externally with the central processing unit. Okay, instead of that, in microcontroller unit, all of these things like memory, I/O, and other peripheral devices are available on the single chip. Okay, so this is your microcontroller. In microprocessor, you are avail avail available with only one unit, that is your processing unit, and in microcontroller, you are available with the processing unit as well as memory, I/O, and other required peripherals. Okay, sometimes. Uh, I/O and memory combinedly known as the peripheral device. Uh, next, we will see the definition of the microprocessor. So, a microprocessor is a programmable, clock-driven, resistor-based electronic device that reads the instruction from the storage device known as a memory, takes the data from the input device and processes those data according to instruction that you have already written inside the memory and it provides the result to the output unit okay so microprocessor is a basically programmable device why we have used the word programmable because here we are using some instructions that you have already stored inside the uh, memory and you are performing the different set of operation on the data depending upon that sequence of that instruction okay so and that is that instructions are provided by the programmer so that's why we have used the word programming second word is the clock driven here whole task that we have divided into basic operation and that basic operations are also precisely divided depending upon the system clock Okay, so all of your task is going to be performed on clock. So we have used the word clock driven. Third, the third word we have used is the resistor base. Here we have used the resistors to store your data while you are processing that data. So here that word resistor base is used. And as it is the electronic device, so all of these things are fabricated on single chip. So that is, uh, we have used the word electronic device. Okay, so basically microprocessor is a programmable clock driven resistor based electronic device that reads the instructions from the storage device that is your memory takes the data from the input device and processes those data according to the instruction that you have already stored and provide the result to the output unit okay so this is your basic definition of microprocessor if we uh, consider the microprocessor based system with the bus architecture then we can write uh, we can draw it like this this is your basic system uh, with the uh, bus architecture here this this denotes your microprocessor unit with alu resistor array and the control unit then this denotes your input output unit and this denotes your memory unit and this all of this uh, external peripherals as well as your microprocessor unit are connected with this system bus okay here alu is the arithmetic and logical uh, alu performs the arithmetic and logical operations like add subtract ending oring and so on the resistor array stores the result during the execution of the program and the control unit provides the necessary timing and control signals while required okay and it uh, also controls the flow of data between the microprocessor and other peripheral devices so uh, we can draw it like this your microprocessor based system with using some buses to connect your peripheral devices like input output and memory devices if you consider the memory 
then the memory is the storage device where you can store your data but this information is basically going to be stored in form of binary numbers like zeros and one it basically it is of two type like that is read only memory where you can only read the data and second type is the random access or read and write memory where you can read as well as the write data okay so you can alter your program so whenever you require to store those program which should not be altered then you have to store those data into rom and where you require to change your data then at that, that that kind of programs you have to store inside the ram okay so this is the basically two type of memory which we can connect with the microprocessor uh, next thing we have used the input output device to provide and to provide the communication with the external world for input device we can consider like keyboard mouse and so on and for output device we can consider like monitor like a uh, printer uh, if we consider the third aspect that is the system bus then uh, that system bus provides the path between the microprocessor and peripheral basically it is the group of wire that carries your bit in any of digital system we are transmitting bits in groups not a single bit okay so to transfer in group of bits we will require many wires and that group of wire we can consider it as a system bus okay so it is the basically a communication path between the microprocessor and other peripheral devices so next let me see how this microprocessor work so to execute the program the microprocessor reads each and every instruction from the memory interprets it and then execute it or you can say performs it okay so basically what you have done you have written some programs in form of instruction inside the memory so a uh, processor required to execute those instruction and to execute those instruction it requires to first read that instruction then interpret or decode that instruction what is the task is required to execute that instruction is decided by the control processor then it will require to perform that task that is it has interpreted okay so basically we can consider reading task as a fetching of the instruction interpreting that instruction is known as the decoding of that instruction and last task or you can say performing is known as the execution of that instruction so basically for each and every instruction it has to fetch that instruction then it has to decode that instruction and then execute that instruction and this kind of task fetch decode execute fetch decode execute continues for the all of the instruction that you have stored inside the memory okay so basically you can consider it like this it fetches the instruction then it will decode the instruction and then execute that instruction okay so if we consider and the basic device or basic microprocessor then in that microprocessor at a time any one task can be performed like any one instruction can be fetched or any one instruction can be decoded or any one instruction can be executed at a time it can perform the this task at parallel it requires to do simultaneously okay so first it will fetch first instruction then it will decode first instruction and then it will execute first instruction after it will after it will fetch second instruction decode second instruction and execute second instruction and so on okay in higher versions of processor there is a pipelining concept is possible so at that place you can fetch one instruction decode another instruction and execute another instruction at a time that is possible for the higher versions of microprocessor but if we consider the basic microprocessor 8085 then it will only fetch or only decode or only execute any instruction at a time okay so this is the how your microprocessor will work with the instruction it will require three tasks fetching of the instruction decoding of the instruction and execution of the instructions okay so okay so here we are ending our today's session in next session we will see further mm -hmm.